so we have this leapfrog model that um, is one of ours. It's a dam project and it's similar to what the customer was after. They had an issue where they wanted to constrain an existing model into a new site boundary. Um, so I would concede that this GIS line is describing this new site boundary yeah. uh, and they want to be able to constrain that model. So I suggested that they apply a lateral extent onto their boundary for their project. Um, and we can do that by right clicking on our boundary object underneath our leapfrog model, and then just choosing new lateral extent. In this case, because we've imported a GIS line, we'll use that. Fantastic. So I'm just gonna choose the one that we've got, which is our new project area. And we have some options around if we want it to be a surface, or if we want it to be a vertical wall. And so the difference there is uh, if we wanted to have just a straight vertical cut around the boundary, vertical wall. Uh, but if you, for some reason, wanted to have an angle to the boundary, so maybe you wanted a tapering up or down, uh, the surface allows you to have more flexibility around the actual angle of the, the boundary edge. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, great. So if we just click OK, and we'll see that the model will then be constrained to a vertical wall around the edge of our boundary. So at the moment, this is a model that hasn't been constrained, but if I just pull in the new one, we'll see that that is significantly smaller uh, than it was previously. And it's just within that product area that they want to be looking. Nice. Now, occasionally someone might do this and instead of getting the inside of the boundary line, they instead get everything outside it and a hole where they actually want their site. How do they fix that? Yes, yeah, so that's commonly when they use a polyline as an input. So if we have a look at this other logical model that I have there, and we do the same thing uh, to this one. Yeah. Uh, and this time we want to have a constraint around some other kind of feature. We can use, instead of using a GIS line, we might be using a polyline. And again, we can either use an existing polyline or a new polyline that we're going to draw ourselves. And, and once again, we can use a surface or a vertical wall. Uh, again, I'm just going to use the vertical wall. So if we draw this um, polyline, we can, depending on which way we draw it, will depend on which way uh, the polyline will create our lateral extent. So we can turn off a model and I can, when I want to close off this boundary, we get a little circle, which means that we can close that polyline. If I then hit save, we'll see that it will update the model boundary. And this time it's modeled it on the interior. And that's because you did it clockwise when you drew that line. Yep. So if we then wanted to flip that and have a hole in the middle of our model product, we can just use this back-to-back -back triangles button on the top toolbar. Um, as long as we've selected all the nodes and all the line pieces, and we can do that using the control A button uh, on our keyboard. So this time I'm just going to click save. And we'll now see we should have a hole in the middle of our project. Nice. So even if you don't have a site boundary from uh, a GIS object, you can very easily use this polyline editing to constrain and change the model boundary like Richard's shown here and uh, really quickly flip it uh, so that it's either the interior, interior of the line or the exterior. Fantastic.